All right, welcome back. Uh, today in the uh, hottest seminar, we have Elizabeth Stenholm from the University of Bergen, who will tell us about non-well-founded sets in HOT. Thank you, Carlo. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me to this seminar. Yes, uh, I'm Elizabeth. I'm gonna talk about non-well-founded sets in homotopy type theory. So let's uh, jump into it. And first I wanna start by some background and motivation for what we're doing. So there have been a couple of models of constructive set theory in homotopy type theory over the years. Um, the first one, to my knowledge, uh, was done by Axel in 1978, which he based on this W type, where U here is a universe of small types. And uh, we take the W type, which is a type of trees, and the First, the type A there is uh, the type of branchings in the trees. So trees with branchings in, in small types. And this model uh, is a model of constructive set theory with foundation because it's uh, based on well-founded trees. So we get the foundation axiom. Uh, this model is setoid based. So he defines an equivalence relation and interprets equality as this equivalence relation. And then in uh, 1989, Ingrid Lindström um, made another model of constructive set theory, which was based on something akin to the uh, corresponding M type, which is a type of trees, but not well-founded. So trees where you have possibly infinite depth, but still you take branchings over uh, the universe U. This, uh, she showed, is also a model of constructive set theory, but this time, instead of foundation, it's a model of Axel's anti-foundation axiom. And again, this model is setoid-based, so she defines an equivalence relation and interprets equality as this equivalence relation. And then in 2018, uh, Hilterud made another uh, model of constructive set theory, uh, which he based on a subtype of the W type that Axel used. And the reason why he uh, made a new model on a subtype, first of all, we get like Axel, a model of constructive set theory with foundation, but in this model, equality is actually the identity type. So the goal, um, and this work that I'm talking presenting today is joint work together with Håkon Wilterud. So our goal for this work was to uh, have a model of constructive set theory with Axel's anti-foundation axiom, but where equality is the identity type. So uh, like Lindström, but she it was set setoid based for her, so we want. Uh, Axel's anti-foundation axiom with the identity type as equality. So in order to get such a model, one way to get one is to construct uh, the terminal co-algebra for the U-restricted power set factor. And I will define exactly what this functor is, but um, the reason why we get a model of constructive set theory with uh, Axel's anti-foundation axiom if we have such a terminal co-algebra, first of all, a terminal co-algebra for the power set functor is a fixed point for the functor. And as soon as we have a fixed point for the power set functor, we get a model of uh, constructive set theory. But uh, only having a fixed point doesn't say anything about foundation or anti-foundation. And that's where the terminality comes in. So if we have a terminal co-algebra, we get, um, a model of Axel's anti-foundation axiom. So that's what we wanted to do and set out to do. Uh, and you might uh, pick up on the fact that I say what we wanted to do. Um, yes, I will get there. The idea that we had to construct this terminal co-algebra was to dualize the V0 construction of Yulterud in 2018. Um, because that one, is the initial algebra for the power set functor. So then we thought, okay, let's dualize the construction in 
quite a there's a quite straightforward dualization and we thought and hoped that we would get the terminal coalgebra and just some uh, quick note on why what we're doing is not trivial um so for a polynomial functor which is a functor that looks like this for some a and b so a a type a and a type family b uh, the type the corresponding w type is the initial f algebra and the corresponding m type is the terminal f coalgebra but the power set functor is not a polynomial functor so this is why this is not uh, trivial because we don't uh, just get a terminal coalgebra for free we have to actually do some work and the terminal coalgebra for the power set functor exists classically but this relies on the axiom of choice and uh, so it has not yet um, been constructed constructively so that's what we're trying to do here because we're in homotopy type theory so we're working constructively okay uh so i'm gonna spoil the end already um but i will go through the details but like if you fall asleep at least you will get my i will get my point across so uh what we did unfortunately we don't get the terminal coalgebra for the power set functor but uh, we didn't waste our time completely <laughs> because we do get a fixed point for the power set functor, which means that we um, get a model of set theory. And moreover, we do get terminality with respect to embeddings. And I will say exactly what I mean by this. But um, this then means that we have a model of constructive set theory with instead of Axel's anti-foundation axiom, it's a model of Scott's anti-foundation axiom. Because uh, most people are probably familiar with Axel's anti-foundation axiom if you are familiar with any anti-foundation axiom. But there are a couple of others. And one uh, was proposed by Dana Scott. And this, our uh, model of set theory that we get because it's a fixed point becomes a model of this Scott's anti-foundation axiom because of this terminality with respect to embeddings. So we got something, not quite exactly what we wanted, but still, uh, it wasn't a waste of time. <laughs> okay, so um, to go through the, I want to go through the type uh, that we constructed and these results about it. So to start, I'm going to go through the type V0 from uh, Gilterud 2018 to show the idea for how we dualize it. So uh, we start from the W type um, that Axel used, and this is the inductive type that has a single constructor, SUP, uh, where uh, you take a small type and a function from that type into the W type, and then you get a new element of the W type. And as I uh, said already, uh, you should think of the elements in the W type as well-founded trees. And the type A here is um, a branching, like an indexing type for uh, a branching. And the function from A to W picks out uh, a tree for every index. So what SUP does, uh, is to take uh, a bunch of uh, trees and then put a root so that the children of the root are these trees that we pick out and then we get a new well-founded tree. So here are some example elements to, uh, it's always nice with pictures to help with intuition. Um, both of these are elements in the W type. And the, so we start from, uh, the bottom from the leaves. The leaves are uh, soup where you take for the type A here, you take the empty type and here just the empty elimination. And then you get the leaves and then you uh, hear soup bool and you pick out these two and so on. Okay, so 
Um, this one, as I said in the beginning, W types are initial algebras for polynomial functors. And this is the functor for which the, this specific W type is the initial algebra. I'm denoting it here T subscript U, uh, which takes a type X and uh, returns the sigma type, where you take a small type A and a function from A to X. And on maps, so if we have a map from X to Y, and again, a small type A and a function from A to X, then we need to return a small type and a function from that small type into Y. So we just return the same small type and post compose with the function G. And TU here is polynomial, which is, uh, so we have this initial algebra and also uh, later on, we will work also with the terminal co-algebra. Okay, yes. The W type together with so the constructor is the initial TU algebra. Now, we wanna define V0 as a subtype of this W type. So we need to define a, a propositional valued family of types which uh, we call is it set, um, is iterative set, but I shortened it to make it fit the slide. <laughs> so we say that sub AF is an iterative set. If F is an embedding and F is the, um, the branching at the root of the tree. So that needs to be an embedding and recursively for every um, index at the root, the subtree at that index should recursively be an iterative set. And then we uh, define V0 to be the subtype of uh, elements in the W type that are iterative sets. The way you should think about this is that um, an, a tree in the W type is an iterative set if every branching all the way down everywhere in the tree is an embedding. Okay. So um, the two elements that we had before, the left one is not an iterative set. So this one is not in V0 because this um, branching at the bottom right is not an embedding. It's not injective, so it's not an embedding. But this one to the right is in V0 because every branching is an embedding. All right. and. V0, as I um, uh, said, I think mentioned in the beginning, is the uh, initial algebra for um, the power set functor, the U restricted power set functor. And this is the definition. This is what I mean by the U restricted power set functor. So uh, it's the functor that takes the type X to the type of uh, small a small type and an embedding from that small type into X. So you can think of this as a U small sub uh, type of X. And that's why I call it the U restricted power set functor. And then on maps, so say we have a map G from X to Y, and then we have a small type and an embedding from A into X. This is what we have here. We need to construct a small type and an embedding into Y. And we can't just post compose like we did with T because we need an embedding. And we don't know that, uh, we don't know anything about G. So we don't know that this post, this composition is an embedding. So what we do is that we take the composition of G and F, but then we take the image of this and then the image inclusion. And this functor is not polynomial. So that's why it makes it more difficult to uh, construct initial algebra and terminal co-algebra. And just to help with hopefully the intuition, this uh, composition, taking the image, this is what we're doing in pictures. So we have a small type A, we have an embedding into X, we have a map from X to Y, and then we compose these two maps and take the image and then the image inclusion. Okay. and. This type uh, V0, where we pick out the iterative sets from the W type is the initial PU algebra. 
I'm not going to prove this here, um, but we have, me and uh, Håkan Hjelterud have a forthcoming paper where we're uh, going to write down uh, this uh, and many other things, but this is forthcoming. But this is not for this talk. So now we want to dualize the idea here that we had for V0. So remember, we started with well-founded trees, um, but then we took the su subtype where we everything should be embeddings, all the branchings should be embeddings. We want to do the same thing, but instead start with trees that are not well-founded. They could be uh, possibly infinite depth, but we still want to pick out the trees where we have embeddings everywhere. So that's the idea. So now we get to this type, V0 subscript infinity, where uh, we dualize the idea of V0. So uh, with V0, we started from the initial T algebra and picked out the trees that are, where the branchings are embeddings. Now we want to start from the terminal T co-algebra. T is the polynomial functor, so we have a um, terminal co-algebra. And we want to pick out the trees where the branchings are embeddings arbitrarily far down. So um, we start from this M type, the one that corresponds to the uh, W type. So we have this M type has a destructor D sub, and these two um, are the terminal TU co algebra. And I'm going to, for another TU co algebra X and M, I'm going to let COREC be the corresponding unique TU co algebra homomorphism. And I just a quick note that uh, we don't need to assume that we have M types because they can be constructed from inductive types, which was uh, shown by Ardens, Capriotti, and Spadotti. Okay, so this M type um, contains possibly infinitely deep trees, but where the branchings everywhere are uh, in our small types. So here are some example elements. The left one is the uh, infinite tree with uh, binary, the infinite binary tree. So every uh, node has two children. Uh, that's an element of the M type. And then the right uh, tree here is the one that every node has one uh, child. And that's also an element in the M type. And just some uh, quick notation that's going to be uh, very nice later on. So if we have a coalgebra, TU coalgebra, so a type and a um, coalgebra, uh, map, so a map from X into TU of X, which is this type. Then for an element in the carrier X, uh, we take X bar to be this small type that we get from M. And we take X tilde to be the function here. And this is the same notation that Axel used in his uh, construction of, uh, of a model of set theory but it's, it's nice and convenient. Okay, so uh, we want to pick out now this subtype of the M type that corresponds to the subtype of um, the W type. So we want to define a propositional valued type uh, family of types. So we define the predicate is coiterative set, but we do it, this is indexed um, over the natural numbers because we're dealing with non-well-founded trees so we can't just um, do well-founded induction. So instead we go over the index over the natural numbers and say that first of all an element x in the m-type is a zero coiterative if um, it's a zero coiterative set if x tilde is an embedding and x tilde is the um, branching at the root of the tree. So the branching at the root of the tree should be an embedding, then it's a zero coiterative set. And then we say that X is a successor of N coiterative set if for every 
uh, index at uh, root, um, that subtree is an n coiterative set. Okay, how should you think about this? Um, let's the first one uh, zero is uh, just this one that the branching at the root is an embedding. So let's go one step more and look at uh, one coiterative set. We say that every index uh, at the root, every subtree to that, so every subtree to the root should be zero coiterative set, which means zero coiterative set means that the branching at the root should be an embedding. So one coiterative set means that um, every branching at depth one, so all the children of the root, their branchings should be embeddings. And more generally, n coiterative set says that all the branchings at depth n in the tree um, should be embeddings everywhere. So then, uh, now I am overloading notation here with coiterative set, but um, hopefully it's clear from the context what I mean. But then we say that an element in the m-type is a coiterative set if it's n coiterative set for every natural number m. And then we take the subtype uh, v0 infinity as the elements in the m-type, which are coiterative sets. Okay, so uh, this is the like kind of straightforward dualization of uh, v0. Now, um, let's just yeah, the two example elements I had before. The left one, this infinite binary tree is not a coiterative set. So it's not an element of V0 infinity, but the tree to the right is because all of the branchings everywhere are embeddings. So uh, now we have defined this type. Now let's look at um, some results about it what I already gave away in the beginning, but now let's look at it in more detail. So first of all, uh, the nice result that we have, uh, that's which is uh, not disappointing, <laughs> is that V0 infinity is a fixed point for PU. So we, there is an equivalence between V0 infinity and PU V0 infinity. So I'm gonna, obviously not go through all of the technical details, but give you the outline of the proof. There's a formalization of this. So anyone who is just dying to see all the, te the technical details, uh, you're very welcome to look at the Agda code. Um, okay, so the idea for this proof uh, is that first of all, uh, the M type is the that we start from uh, to construct the subtype is the terminal TU co-algebra, which means that it's a fixed point for TU. So we have this uh, equivalence, this map D sub infinity, which goes from left to right here, um, which is an equivalence, and I'm going to call the inverse sub infinity. So we start from that, and then we define D sub zero, which instead starts in V zero infinity and goes a priori, it goes here lands in tu m and this is just uh pre-composing with the first projection so this is a subtype of the m type we pick out the element of the m type and then do d sub infinity okay and then what we do is show that in fact d sub zero lands in pu v zero infinity so what we need to do the difference between these two is that um here we just have a small type and a map from that type into the M type. Here we have a small type and then an embedding from that type into V0 infinity. So we need to show that the map here is an embedding that lands in V0 infinity. Uh, but there's nothing uh, magical really going on here. Um, you just, it's just, you got to work through the, um, just kind of work through the details. But it does in fact land there. And then we do the same or thing for sup. We start with sup infinity and define a sup zero. 
So this one should go the other way. So we start in PU V0 infinity and a priori, it's a map that ends in, that lands in the M type. And the way it's defined is that uh, given a small type and an embedding from that type into V0 infinity, we uh, take the same small type, but then we post compose with the first projection so that F now goes from A into M and then we take sub infinity. Oh yeah, this is a superscript. I'm sorry about that. I thought I changed it everywhere. I went back and forth if I sh it should be a superscript or a subscript. So sorry about that. Okay. And then we show that in fact, sub zero lands in V zero infinity. So we need to show that the element we get here is a co set. Again, uh, no nothing magical going on here. Uh, you just work through the details. And then finally, uh, the fact that D sub zero and sub zero are inverses follows from the fact that D sub infinity and sub infinity are inverses. So it's quite straightforward, but um, a bit of technical details. So since V zero infinity is a fixed point for uh, the power set functor, it is a model of constructive set theory. And this is actually a result that goes all the way back to 1957 uh, by Rieger. But then of course he did it classically, but he showed that if you have a fixed point for the power set functor, you get a model of uh, set theory. He did it classically. So he got a um, classical model uh, or a model of not uh, non-constructive set theory. But um, the idea here is the same. But since we are in a constructive framework, we get a model of constructive set theory instead. So that's nice. So V0 infinity is a new model of constructive set theory. Now we get to the question, is V0 infinity with D sub zero, the terminal PU co-algebra? And the answer is no, it's not. So I'm gonna now show you a counter example to terminality. So what we need to do to show that it's not terminal is to construct two different PU coalgebra homomorphisms into V0 infinity. Because if it's terminal, there should be a unique one, but we need to construct two different ones. So consider this graph. And uh, a graph um, is a... Uh, co-algebra. So the, and the way this is a PU co-algebra is that uh, you start with a carrier that has two elements and then um, you send uh, uh, the, um, you get the indexing type, the degree of the, uh, the out degree, and then the map that picks out the corresponding children. So this uh, represents a PU co-algebra where the carrier has two elements. So now I'm going to construct two different uh, PU co-algebra or give you the idea of two different PU co-algebra homomorphisms into V0 infinity. So first of all, we have Coric, which um, lands a priori lands in the M type, but in this type, uh, it's gonna uh, there. It's gonna actually land in V zero infinity. The it's gonna map to coiterative sets, and there uh, each the two nodes are mapped to these uh, their corresponding unfolding trees. So the left node here has two children, and the, one of them has one child, and the other has two children, and so on, which is what we get here two children, one of them has one child, the other has two, and so on. And then the right node here has one child, which has two children, which has one child, and then, yeah. And then we get this tree, which is from here on down, this is the same as this tree, but instead we start with a, a node here at the top. So this is, um, this map, these two are co-iterative. Uh, elements. So uh, this is one PU mapping these two nodes to these two trees 
is the PU coval homomorphism into V0 infinity. But there is another one. There's also a PU coval homomorphism which maps both nodes to this tree. And this is because essentially because we take the image, uh, if you remember in the PU coval we take the post composition and then the image which collapses things. So um, the uh, map that maps those two nodes both to this tree is a PU coal homomorphism. It will the diagram will commute because we take images. But I want to point out that this map is not a TU coal homomorphism because um, with T we don't take images. Like we remember everything, uh, so to say, and then it doesn't commute. So it's only a PU coal homomorphism. But um, these, these two trees and this tree are not the same tree uh, because uh, equality in, so now these are elements in V0 infinity. What's equality in V0 infinity? Uh, it's a subtype of the M type. So it's the same as equality in the M type and equality in the M type is um, tree isomorphism. And these are not uh, the same as this. They're not isomorphic to this tree. So we have two distinct PU coal homomorphisms um, into V0 infinity. So it's not the terminal coal uh, PU coal Yes, but um, which uh, is uh, not optimal, but or not what we hope for, but that's okay because we have almost terminality. And this is the exact result that we actually have. So if we have a PU coalgebra XM, such that Coric, which lands in the M type, uh, is an embedding, then the following type is contractible. So uh, the type of PU coalgebra homomorphisms from X into V0 infinity, where the map is an embedding. So this is what I mean by we have kind of terminality with respect to embeddings because we take coalgebras that are embeddings, but we also need to require something about the coalgebra that we start with. It, it has to be such that coric is an embedding. So not terminal, but not too far off. So let's look at an outline of um, a proof that this is actually the case. So we got to construct first a center of contraction. So uh, assume now that we have such a coalgebra XM and then coric is an embedding from uh, X to the M type. First, we want to show that coric in fact lands in V0 infinity. So uh, the elements you get here are actually coiterative set. So what we need to do to show that is that we need to show for all X in X and all natural numbers N, coric of X is an N uh, coiterative set. And we do this by induction on N. So in the base case, uh, we need to show that coric of x tilde over the whole thing <laughs> is an embedding. But uh, this is a, a TU. We, now we use the commuting diagram, the fact that it's a TU uh, coalgebra homomorphism. So we know that this is actually coric composed with x tilde. And this is the composition, a composition of two embeddings. X tilde is an embedding because uh, we said that XM is a PU coalgebra. So then the tilde thing here is an embedding. And then by assumption, coric is an embedding. So this is an embedding and that's the base case. For the induction step, um, we take a small a in X bar and then Simply by induction, coric uh, x tilde of a is n coiterative, which is what we need to show 
So in the induction step, we need to show that correct of X is successor of N quaternative, which means for every A in X bar, coric of uh, X tilde A is um, N quaternative. But this holds by induction. So uh, coric is then an embedding from X into V zero infinity. So it, it's an embedding into the base type M, which lands actually in the subtype. So then it's an embedding into the subtype. And it is a PU co-algebra homomorphism because it is an embedding. And here uh, we need to use the fact that Coric is an embedding again to show that it's a PU co-algebra homomorphism. Okay, and then we wanna show equality to uh, the center of contraction. So take an arbitrary um, embedding from X to V zero infinity, which is a PU co-algebra uh, homomorphism is, is what it should say here. Now uh, we need to show that F is equal to Coric, which was the center of contraction. But to do this, it's enough to show that uh, if we post compose with the first projection, so we continue uh, into the base type from this subtype, then they're equal because equality in the subtype is equality in the base type. But um, the map pi zero uh, composed with F is a TU co-algebra. And this is where we need the fact that F is an embedding. Otherwise this, uh, uh, this doesn't work to show that it's a TU co-algebra, but we only know that it's a PU co-algebra. But because F is an embedding, we can show that this is a TU co-algebra. And then by the terminality of the M type, it follows that these two are equal. Okay, so um, we have this, let me just remind ourselves of what it is that we have. So we have this uh, type is contractible. And now um, I'm gonna talk about how this corresponds to Scott's uh, anti-foundation axiom, uh, because it's very, it's quite, um, there's a quite nice one-to-one uh, -one or like um, correspondence between the formulation of Scott's anti-foundation axiom and what we have here. So let us first remind ourselves about this axiom or maybe for some people, first time hearing about it, <laughs> What is Scott's anti-foundation axiom? So first let's uh, define Scott extensionality, which I'm gonna need to define the uh, axiom. So now this slide uh, is written not in homotopy type theory, but in a set theoretic framework. Uh, this is the how you find it in the literature. This is from uh, Axel, uh, Axel has a text about uh, non-well-founded sets and there he uh, defines different anti-foundation axioms. And so this formulation comes from that text because the, <laughs> the original formulation of the Scott's anti-foundation axiom is very difficult to find. It's uh, everyone like references it, but it's from an unpublished note, which uh, we have tried to track down, but we haven't managed to do which is kind of funny, but everyone references that anyway. But this uh, is from Axel. So, okay. A graph G is Scott extensional if for any two uh, nodes in the graph, A and B, if, and then the antecedent of the implication is that the unfolding tree of A and the unfolding tree of B are isomorphic, then A equals B. Okay, so two nodes uh, in a graph, you can construct their unfolding trees. And if the, the unfolding trees are isomorphic as trees, then A equals B. That's the uh, uh, definition of Scott extensional. And then um, Scott's anti-foundation axiom states that um, if V is a universe of sets, then V um, satisfies Scott's anti-foundation axiom. If V is Scott extensional 
and every Scott extensional graph has a decoration. Okay, first part of this, V is Scott extensional. Uh, Scott extensional has to do with is something that graphs can be. So what does it mean that V is Scott extensional? So V here is a, a universe of sets, um, but uh, V can be seen as a graph by taking um, as uh, children of each node, the elements of that set. So in that sense, V is a graph. And then uh, to have Scott's anti-foundation axiom, this graph should be Scott extensional. And also every Scott extensional graph should have a decoration. And a decoration of a graph is simply that you, to every node in the graph, assign a set such that the children of the node in the graph are precisely the elements of the set that you decorated. So now, uh, how does this translate to our setting? Okay, so our universe of sets here uh, is V0 infinity. And this is Scott extensional because equality is tree isomorphism. So uh, it's Scott extensional if uh, tree isomorphism implies equality, uh, but for us, we know what the equality is. It's the equality of the M-type, which is tree isomorphism. So V0 infinity is Scott extensional. And um, uh, given a PU coalgebra XM, to say that COREC is an embedding, which is uh, one of the uh, requirements that we used in the theorem that I showed, is to say that equality between nodes is isomorphism of the corresponding unfold increase. Okay, so um, we said a coric is an embedding and embedding means that the equality says something about the equality types. So coric is an embedding into the M type and we know what equality is there. It's tree isomorphism. So that means that equality in the uh, PU coalgebra is the X is tree isomorphism. And moreover, coric maps uh, an element to its unfolding tree. So to say that coric is an embedding is to say that equality between the nodes in your coalgebra is isomorphism of the corresponding unfolding trees. And then a decoration is precisely a PU coalgebra homomorphism. So this is a very, a, a very direct translation into our setting of uh, Scott. So Scott says that the universe should be Scott extensional. It is. And uh, for every Scott extensional graph, which in our setting is every PU coalgebra such that Coric is an embedding, um, the, that graph should have a decoration in our setting that coalgebra should have a PU coalgebra homomorphism into V0 infinity, which it does. Yes, so um, that was the um, main point I wanted to get across. So now just some finishing uh, finishing up. Uh, there's, uh, as I said, this has mostly been formalized and you can find the formalization at this uh, link. If some, to uh, avoid potential confusion, if anyone uh, actually looks at this, um, this is a link to not the main branch because uh, this formalization was done a while ago and then we've done other stuff. So this is a, not the main branch. Uh, so you don't get confused. There are other things in the main branch. Okay, and some future work. So first of all, this is not completely uh, formalized. There are some things left to do. And I don't know how many of you noticed that there was something I kind of swept on the rug, under the rug. But uh, when I defined the power set functor, I said that we take the image of the composition, but that needs to be a small type. Because the, the type that we, uh, uh, the first, uh, of the two elements, the type should be a small type. But a priori, if you go with like the hotbook definition of image, 
that's not a priori small type. So, but we uh, uh, can fix this because thanks to the joint construction by Egbert Rike, we know that if we have a map where the domain is small and the codomain is locally small, then we can construct a small image. Uh, in our case, the domain is small uh, and the codomain is the M type. So uh, we need to show that the M type is locally small for this to actually work. And this uh, is uh, in my head, but it hasn't been formalized yet. So that's left to do. Then we also need to formulate Scott's anti foundation axiom in the model. Like we need to translate it to. Uh, a first order logic formula, uh, and then that uh, works internally to the model, and then show that uh, it has an uh, inhabitant. And this is uh, not done yet, which is why uh, I gave you this um, this correspondence, but I didn't make it precise. But we need to formulate it in the model and then show that it holds. So that's left to do. And also the counter example that I gave uh, to terminality hasn't been formalized yet. So that still needs to be done. So these are things I have on my to-do list whenever I will have some time. <laughs> and uh, then some other more, even further in the future work for uh, maybe not me, we'll see, is to investigate like a higher level generalization of V0 infinity, which we could call VN infinity, where instead of taking embeddings everywhere, we take an N truncated uh, maps everywhere, the branchings. Now, uh, that would be interesting to think about what's what that is. So like, can we think of this as some type of non-well-founded multisets maybe? Like is V1 infinity maybe um, non-well-founded multisets? Perhaps, uh, I have not thought much about this, but this would be interesting. And then, like, do we have some sort of generalization of Axel's anti-foundation axiom or Scott's anti-foundation axiom, or maybe some other anti-foundation axiom for this type? Again, I haven't thought much about this, so I'm not sure, really. But that could be interesting to look at. Yeah. Um, I think that was about it, what I wanted to say. And I have, of course, references here for anyone who's interested. Thank you so much for listening to me. OK, well, thank you very much. Let's uh, visually applaud for the speaker. Thank you. Uh, and then, yeah, if anyone has a question, you can go ahead and uh, unmute yourself while you're uh, thinking if you have a question I'll ask the the easiest question so what uh, uh, what did you formalize this in uh, in Agra right okay. so, using yeah, I, mm -hmm. the a Unimath library Great. yeah have you tried to write to Dana Scott to ask um, about the manuscript he's very approachable actually if you write it, I think he'll be happy to give you not only the manuscript, but maybe tell you a bit more. Yeah, um, I haven't written to him personally, but I talked to someone, but I don't remember who, if if you are here, who wrote to him. I think, um, <laughs> please, for, uh, this was a while ago. Uh, I haven't done that myself, but I think someone did reach out to him. But yeah, maybe I should, yeah, maybe I could give it a try myself. Yeah, he is usually very approachable. Yeah, yeah, might be, yeah, might be worthwhile. Unless anyone here happens to have it, that would be amazing. <laughs> Please send it to me. Yeah. So I'm intrigued by this failure, um, mm -hmm. because uh, one would expect that the final coalgebra would give a model of Axel's uh, anti-foundation. Mm. So I would like to understand more. Do you have any intuition why? So, I mean, if it is true that if you have the terminal co-algebra, you would get a model of Axel. That's true. 
Mm -hmm. uh, the, the thing is that we didn't manage to construct the terminal co-algebra. Um, and uh, I mean, the counter example that I gave sort of hints that we have too large of a subtype, like uh, because we have these two different trees and they both, um, there's a PO co-algebra homomorphism uh, that maps to to both of these. So like we we don't restrict enough is my feeling of this subtype. We need to um, take even fewer elements. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, it is. I'm still not. It's still not quite uh, super clear in my head why it's not terminal, except for this. I have this counter example, but we really thought that it was terminal, and we <laughs> spent a long time trying to prove terminality until um, I one day was like, "We've tried this so long, uh, maybe it's not actually true," <laughs> and then found this counter example. But uh, yeah, I'm not completely sure actually so so just to be clear you you haven't shown that there isn't a terminal co-algebra it's just that your construction didn't produce it yes exactly so, our construction is not a terminal but yes that is the question that is the big question can we construct the terminal pu co-algebra constructively it can be done classically can we do it constructively i don't know actually i, I if anyone has an intuition on that, I, uh, my only intuition is that because we also thought about other strategies, like other ideas for how to construct it, uh, all have uh, seemed to not be very fruitful so far. So my only intuition that if it's possible, then it's, yeah, I, I, I don't know how you, you would do it. It seems well, hard. It, so would it be plausible that, um the the final co-algebra can be constructed out of what you have as a subset or something or a subtype maybe. yeah maybe um maybe if we have uh another predicate or take a subtype of v0 infinity uh yes that's our uh we have tried to think of some other uh subtype which is even smaller which would be the terminal quadra. We haven't yet come up with anything that seems to be working. But maybe, um, yeah, maybe it could still be constructed as a subtype of the M type. That's not impossible. Just gotta find the right uh, subtype. Yeah. Yeah, so for the iterative sets, you actually have two conditions. You have one is that uh, it is iteratively an embedding, as in your case, mm -hmm. but you also need the, the, the transitivity condition. Um, right. Oh no, that's for no, that's for. I'm confusing this uh, with Tom De Young's work that this is for the ordinals. Yeah, for the iterative sets, you only require it's an embedding. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Hmm. Not only Tom, but uh, also somebody who was here before and left. Yeah, yeah, I know what, what um, paper you're referring to. Yeah, yeah they're the ordinals. So maybe you need an additional condition. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to make it an even smaller subtype, yeah. But I'm not sure what that would be. Um, there is this, uh, okay, so there is this um, paper by um, Nitta, Okada, and Suvaras, which is called Classification of Non-Well-Founded Sets and an Application. And there they um, define uh, different universes of sets, which they call Axel Universe, Scott Universe, and so on, um, that uh, are models of the corresponding anti-foundation axioms. So there, um, they uh, take a subtype of, uh, or a s subset of graphs as the axial universe. So maybe it would be possible to kind of try to translate that to our setting. 
that's an idea. Um, but I just haven't had a lot of time to look at that yet. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, so it's uh, very interesting. And also kind of a coincidence that uh, it doesn't work, but uh, it turns out to model Scots. Yeah. Yeah. That was very surprising. Um, but very a very fun surprise. Yeah. And I, I don't know, like, if that has some sort of deeper meaning that you can draw from it, um, but that Scott is the anti-foundation axiom we get with this. I, I don't, yeah, I don't know. Actually, is it easy to explain what um, Axel's anti-foundation axiom is? Yes, that's or, true. Okay. I, I didn't say that. that that's true. Yes. Um, Axel's anti-foundation axiom says that every graph has a decoration, a unique decoration. And remember, decoration is that you assign a set to each node such that the children of the node are um, the elements of the of the set. So Axel is every graph has a unique decoration. Yeah. Right, and then Scott's, uh, can you just go back to that slide so I can? Of course. Uh, there. Right, I see. So oh, so it, it, it doesn't need to be unique? No. Um, That's a difference? That's the only difference? There are, There's also a difference in um, the equality. Like in, oh, in wow. Scott, equality is... Uh, isomorphism of unfolding trees while um for axel equality is uh by simulation so um essentially um extensionality or yeah um when with well founded sets um extensionality uh, completely determines equality Two sets are equal if they have the same members. And when it's well-founded, uh, that is completely determined. But uh, when we're non-well-founded, that's not uh, completely determined what equality is. So uh, you get different equalities with Scott and with Axel. Yeah. So it, yeah, it's a bit different. But the formulation here is that um, every graph has a decoration. But I think if I remember uh, the Axel text now, I think it's a result uh, like a, um, uh, afterwards that uh, any decor like there can be at most one injective decoration, I think. So, but it follows, I think. Uh, yeah, it's in the it's in Axel's text about normal funded sets. Yeah, but also this condition is only asking for decorations of Scott extensional graphs as opposed to all graphs. That was another difference. Okay. Yes, that's another difference. Yes. Exactly. Axel allows a decoration, a unique decoration of uh, every graph. Right. Here it's just uh, Scott extensional. Yeah. Hmm. Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Can I ask a question to clarify uh, the difference between this work and the, the set theory in the hot book? Mm -hmm. So if I if I understood correctly, in this work you don't have any truncation hypotheses on the types you're dealing with. With all yes. types, the branchings of your sets can be indexed by an arbitrary type and, and so on. Yes. Whereas in the hot book, they are only talking about zero truncated types so it's a it's a very different setup for a, for a model of set theory is that a yes. good summary yeah i mean uh here like the um exactly the we don't have truncation restrictions are you talking about the the model of, of set theory uh like the it's a higher inductive type correct um if i recall in the hotbook um I actually forget the details, but I know that yeah. they, they look at the, the sets, the universe of sets. Yes. 
Um, so they have a model of set theory, and this model is, um, I could have mentioned that, but it's um, equivalent to V0 um, by Yelterud. Uh -huh. But uh, they, uh, if I recall correctly, it's constructed as an, a higher inductive type. Uh, it's equivalent to V0, but V0 is um, instead constructed without higher inductive types. So I have a related question. So the the iterative sets form a zero type here automatically. So when you restrict to embeddings in the, uh, I don't know what uh, terminology you use for your type, for M, your M type. So mm -hmm. when you restrict to the elements that are hereditary embeddings mm -hmm. um, for, for every level N, mm -hmm. um, do do you get a uh, zero type? Yes, I do. Uh, which okay. is okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. Have... Okay. Exactly. Yes. Um, okay. So this is uh, set. I mean, the proof is not very difficult at all because um, mm -hmm. it follows from. Let's see this result. Um, right. And from the fact that this type is a. Uh, this is a power set, yeah. Power sets are also always zero types, yeah. So this is a zero type. Yeah. And uh, it's going to be the same in the general case if we take uh, n truncated um, branchings, then the Vn infinity is going to be an n type because uh, this. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Any other questions? Yes, yeah, so, so you were showing that there's not a unique map into this not terminal thing, but there, but you do have existence, right? That there's there's yeah. always from from any coalgebra we have a map into this one or no, I'm not sure no. about that. We at least have a map into V0 infinity if Coric is an embedding. Okay. But I see. Uh, we needed to, like here, for example, we, we use the fact that it's an embedding to show that the result is actually a co iterative set. So I'm not sure that you, um, I haven't constructed a counter example, but um, we rely on this in the proof that it lands in V0. So uh, I'm not sure that every PU called Ra, I don't think. I think uh, um, you can only say that for those where Coric is an embedding, you get a map, a PU uh, called Brahom into V0 infinity. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Well, let's uh, thank our speaker again. Thank you. Thank you so much.